brothers and sisters, we are in trouble. And I'm telling you what God wants right now tonight from you. This is what he wants. Listen to what it says. Listen, l- listen to what it says in verse 30. This is what it wants. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But what? I found none. Don't let that be said in here. God is looking for somebody. And let me just, let me, let me, let me end it this way. Listen. God is about to stop giving the invitation to churchgoers. He's been begging you, come to my wedding. Please come. He's been dancing around your apostasy, answering your prayers, protecting your family, pleading with you, and you just will not give him your heart. God is about to say, let them alone. Go to the highways. That, that, that's Matthew 22. It says, go to the highways and buy, go get the people who don't go to church. And I'm going to give you some power. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you what's going to take place. Certain laws are going to take place. And just prior to that law taking place, Satan is going to personate Jesus. Satan is going to start showing up with choirs. I'm not talking about these, I'm talking about Satan. And he's going to start saying that God wants to revive the world. And he's going to show up in different places. People, at that time, the people of God who are really serving God are going to be given a power that this earth has only seen when Christ himself walked on earth. You are going to have the same exposure to the power of the Holy Ghost. Satan himself is going to be preaching You are going to be preaching and millions are going to follow you and millions are going to follow him and probation is going to close. And when probation closes, the final prophecy is going to be the seven last plagues. And when they start being poured out, it's too late. Whatever side you're on, you're on. And so he wants to keep you in what is called a stupor, in a paralysis. Mentally believing that you're all right when you're all wrong. And he's going to keep you literally justifying sin in your life. And rather than you pleading to God, you're not studying, you're not praying, God is not first. But there are some people who are serious about God. I mean, there are some people who are way more serious than any of us in this room. And they're loving and they're, they're, they're just so unassuming. You're walking by them all the time. You have no idea. And God's going to pour out his spirit. And they're going to give that final cry. It's not going to end in a building like this. That thing's going to swell and thousands are going to come to Christ in one day. Probation's going to close. Satan himself is preaching. Christ himself in you is preaching. Power against power. The final war. The same way it took place in heaven, it's ending on earth. Where are you going to be? Whose side are you going to be on? See, this, 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 this final prophecy, outward sign, and God said, well, you don't have to believe it if you don't want to. If you could read this and realize this was written over 100 years ago, and look at what happened in New York, and prior to it happening in New York, look at the bold robberies and the killings. They're not going to stop killing kids. It's going to get worse because the Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. It will not get better. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is being withdrawn from this earth. What does that mean? What does that mean? This is what it means. It means because you keep playing with it, he leaves you and goes to somebody who wants him. So he multiplies his power on those who want him and he leaves in utter darkness those who keep playing games. Once he leaves, Satan comes with a little light to have a little interest so you don't realize where you are or you'll cry to God. And then in an emergency, when you call upon the Lord, the devil laughs 
because he knows that you belong to him. Today, if you hear his voice, the Bible says, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart.